Hi, my name is Mary McCarley. I am the National Content Specialist with Goodhart Wilcox. I was a teacher for 15 years in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools as a high school health teacher. I now provide professional development and training for our health and CTE titles. So many teachers and district coordinators have reached out to us in need of CTE digital resources, including this title, Guide to Good Food, and we have been more than happy to provide these resources at no charge given the challenges we know you all are facing. I wanted to create this video on the Guide to Good Food to extend this offer to all teachers and all school districts at no charge in need of digital resources for their nutrition and food preparation course. In this presentation, I will, one, provide an immediate solution. If you're in need of resources right now, I will provide you 10 assessments as a PDF that you can begin assigning to your students today. Two, I will provide you a long-term solution for those teachers and school districts who may remain out of school for the remainder of the school year. At no charge, we can set up online access for 90 days to all of our digital resources for students and teachers. And number three, I will describe the steps to access these resources. So first, an immediate solution. We know that many of you are in need of resources right now. We will provide 10 assessments that you can print, email, or post to Google Classroom or your LMS for students to access. I'll highlight these 10 assessments. First, the Learn About features are embedded in the pages of our textbook. We have created these as PDFs for you. So as you can see here, there is one on evaluating information in the media and a second one on portion distortion. And here are three more, and you'll notice that each one of these also includes know and apply questions. So in addition to the learn about, we've also included some workbook pages. And we were intentional about choosing the workbook pages that students would not need access to our digital text in order to answer the questions. And here are two more workbook pages. And lastly, we've provided an entire lesson on the new nutrition facts. And so this lesson will include teacher text, student text, student worksheet, and answer keys for the teacher. And here are the student worksheet that goes along with this lesson. So now, a long-term solution. We know that many of you may be out of school until the end of the school year. At no charge, we want to provide you 90 days of full access to our digital resources for students and teachers. Guide to Good Food provides an in-depth look at how to select, store, prepare, and serve appealing dishes. It, this is a comprehensive program about lifelong nutrition and food preparation skills. The text is correlated to Precision Exam Career Skills Certificate in Nutrition and Wellness and the AAFCS Prepack Assessment and Certification Program. And I'll provide you an overview of the resources available with the Guide to Good Food and show you how to navigate the online platform. So first, let's dive into the textbook. You'll see that every unit begins with essential questions. Every chapter begins with uh, objectives, a reading prep activity, and content terms. And I do want to point out that any time you see this activity icon, that would indicate to students that if they are in our digital textbook, that they can click on this icon and it will go directly to an engaging activity for students or a video clip, an animation, an assessment. And we were very intentional about making sure the textbook was engaging for these young learners and that there's brightly colored images and infographics embedded within the pages of the text. In addition, there are features on mini labs and recipe for good food. And these have been tailored for a 45 minute class period. In addition, we have high interest features on learn about, global perspective, and health and wellness. And chapter 35 and 36 really does focus on careers, and you'll see that there's additional features on exploring careers, and then also common interview questions. And at the end of every chapter, there's always summary, vocabulary activities, review. Once again, I do want to point out 
This activity icon would indicate the students that they can answer these text dependent questions in digital format and submit to their teacher. Also, core skills, critical thinking, and problem solving. So let's dive into the pages of the book. So this is what you and your, you as a teacher and also your students will see as well. This is our online platform. The first one is our digital textbook, the companion website, the student workbook, and then the instructor also has access to the, the instructor's edition and the online instructor resources. So let's dive into the student textbook first. You'll see that our textbook is divided by units and by chapters. Let's click on a chapter. And I want to point out this navigation bar on the left hand side. I can zoom in. I can also zoom out. Third button down allows me to go to another unit or chapter. Click again to close. The fourth button down allows me to go directly to the companion website. Click again to close. And if I want to print pages as a teacher or a student, I have the opportunity to print pages as well. The arrows on the left and the right allow me to go to the next page of the book. I do want to point out that we are on page 43. I can jump to another page of the book and click, or I can search the book by a key term and click, and it will take me to the page of the book where that key term is found. So I do want to point out, as you can see, there are two opportunities on this page to access our companion website. And by clicking on it, students will go directly to this animation. And then also, as you can see here, by clicking on this, it will take them to a labeling activity. And I'll give you some more information on the companion website in just a minute. So anytime I want to go back, I can always click this My Bookshelf tab to take me back. But before I do so, I do want to jump to another page. We'll jump to another page of the book. And I just want to show you that students can answer these text-dependent questions digitally. So I'm going to click on this and note that I can type directly into these form fields. And as a student, when I'm finished, I do have the opportunity to email it to you. But if you prefer not to receive work that way, all students have the option to right click in the space off to the side. You, they can save it as a PDF. However, if they want to click the print option, they could print it. However, they can also change the way, the destination away from the printer. And at that point in time, they can save it as a PDF or they can also save to Google Drive. And then they can submit to Google Classroom. And this activity icon will take me back to the companion website. If I go back to the companion website, it recognized that I was at chapter two, and you'll see all the activities are available for me at chapter two. But before we dive into the companion website, I just want to give you an overview of what our companion website is. So as I mentioned, um, the companion website really allows students to review, assess, and to extend their knowledge. And there's lots of interactive activities on our companion website. Um, and some of these do include the labeling activities, there's animations, there's video clips, there's vocabulary activities, there's e-flashcards. So now I'm going to show you some of those activities. So you can access the companion website from our main landing page. So if I want to go back, I'm going to click the My Bookshelf tab, and it does take me back. So I can access it from here. However, most of your students will access the companion website from within the pages of the book. So if they're in chapter three, they can access the companion website from here, but they'll likely access it from within the pages of the book. And it recognized I was in chapter three. So here are all the activities that are available. There are e-flashcards. And if I click it, I can see the definition. I can remove it from the deck. I can also change it to see the definition first rather than the term first. I'm gonna click the activity icon to go back. There are also matching activities. And this is set up um, in such that it's not intended to be an assessment, 
but rather to, to, for students, just practice. So if they get them wrong, the program will prompt them to keep trying. There are also vocabulary games that set up similar to Jeopardy. So whether they get it right or wrong, it will tell them the correct answer. There's several different animations. And as you can see here, there's several different additional activities on our companion website. We'll just click on one. And then at the end of every chapter, there's always those text-dependent questions and a self-assessment quiz to get them ready for a test. So as of, by scrolling up and down, you can see the entire companion website for all the chapters of the book are here as well. So that was an overview of our companion website. I'm going to click the My Bookshelf tab and it will take me back to the main landing page. So next, let's go on to the student workbook. So there is a workbook available for students and this is really going to allow them to review, assess, and to extend their knowledge and practice those important skills. Um, so I'm going to show you how to navigate the online platform. And students will be able to type directly into the form fields and submit their work digitally. So let's click on Student Workbook. And then from there, we can choose a particular, just choose chapter three again. And in this format, I can only zoom in. I could zoom out. I can go to another unit or chapter, click again to close. I can also print. But this fourth button down is going to allow me to see this workbook page and the entire workbook with form fields. So now you can see I can see the entire workbook with form fields. And by clicking on any of these pages, I'll be able to type directly into these form fields. And as I scroll down, upon completion, I do have the opportunity to email it to my teacher. However, as a teacher, if you don't want to receive it that way, once again, you can ask your students to right click in the space off to the side. They can save it as a PDF. However, if you use Google Drive and you want them to print, they can print, change the destination away from the printer, and that should give them the option to save to Google Drive. They can also save it as a PDF. So I'm going to click the My Bookshelf tab to go back. So let's see what's available to instructors. So you're gonna have additional resources that are available to you to hopefully help you save time and help to plan and facilitate your course. There are correlations, there are assessments available, PowerPoint presentations, activities, lesson plans, and you will have access to Exam View, which is a test generator. So now let's look at these resources, where to find them. I'm going to scroll down and you'll see that there is a teacher's edition and then the online instructor resources. Let's click on the online instructor resources. From there, I'm going to click instructor resources. There's three tabs, resource material, does show you the correlation. There's pacing guides as well and some information on best practices. I'm going to minimize that and click on chapter resources. So by choosing any chapter of the book, we'll click chapter three again. You can see that these are all the, um, the resources available for teachers. And these are the textbook answer keys, the companion website activity answer keys, the workbook answer keys, the lesson plan, which is in Word document, so you can edit it and add information of, from your previous lesson plans. You'll see that there's several different handouts available for students as well in labs. Also, there's two presentations at the bottom. The first one you cannot modify, but the second one is a chapter PowerPoint and you can modify it. So the one that says for PowerPoint, you can modify. And if you'll see, if I click on another chapter of the book, you'll see that the format is the same. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the last tab, which is the assessment software and question pool. If you have a Windows computer, you'll need this file. If you have a Macintosh, you'll need this file. If you are integrating with learning management systems, you'll need these question bank files. So this allows you to create customized exams for students, and those would include multiple choice, true, false, short answer, and essay questions. And it does generate an answer key as well. 
So how do you get access to these resources? So if you want access to either the immediate resources or the 90 days of free access for students and teachers, just email me at mmccarley at g-w.com. And make sure to let me know if you want the immediate resources and or the 90 days of free access. And if you do want the 90 days of access, consider reaching out to your district coordinator first. We are more than happy to provide access to the entire district. And to learn more about the Guide to Good Food, visit our website. I truly appreciate your time. We are here to support you during these challenging times. I hope you have a wonderful day and stay healthy.